Bridge playing goes as far back as late 1800s. The word bridge comes from the Galata Bridge, where bridge players crossed every day to go to play cards. Duplicate tournament bridge also became a hot activity during the 20th century. It, in duplicate, bridge players at a table are dealt hands that are subsequently passed on to another table and then to another one and so on. Consequently, a competing pair plays the same deals that our number of our other pairs play. Duplicate bank began to rise in the 30s and continues to be popular worldwide. I grew up in a small town in Mississippi with 3,000 people, and I'm sure I didn't play bridge when I was growing up. After I graduated, I was taught in a prep school in Chattanooga, and a friend of mine organized a trip to Europe. And on the boat going over, we played bridge all the time. I know that I was playing bridge about that time. I learned it when I was in college, and uh, I played a lot of bridge when I was in college, and almost played my way out of college playing bridge one year. I grew up with it uh, in that my folks played bridge and I watched them play. Um, they would invite couples in and I would watch the four of them play and then uh, sometimes I got to be involved. Probably in college that was a way to meet boys. <laughs> go down to the lounge and you either had to smoke or play bridge and I didn't smoke so I played bridge. I think it's a combination of skill and luck. I mean, every hand you pick up is different. That's what I love about it. You don't, it's not the same every time. It's luck uh, of, of what you're going to, the cards you're going to get, but then uh, there's there's real skill in communicating by whatever conventional means are uh, allowed. Uh, every hand is different, and you get strange sort of deals that uh, you wouldn't believe how many different combinations there are when you deal out four hands. And it was just so much fun. We, we look forward to it every week. I think you gain friends through bridge because you, you usually play for the evening or the afternoon. And it's just not the bridge game. It's uh, getting together with people and you talk uh, between hands. Sometimes communication among people is not so dependent upon what they're saying, but that they are saying something. You, you, you talk about what's going on in the world, and, uh, and then you talk um, during the bridge game. Uh, it's not just solid bridge. <laughs> and that's what's so nice about it, because there are the breaks in the game that, that you have. It's like family gatherings where you hear the same stories over and over, but the point isn't to <laughs> give you any new information, it's just to communicate so the voice and the contact becomes the message in itself so that what you're saying perhaps isn't quite so important as that the fact that you're communicating.
most people play bridges because it's a mental exercise. And I think most people are older and they want to keep their minds very active. And I also believe very wholeheartedly, I'm a scientist, that there is a connection between Alzheimer's and mind apathy, if you will. And so I have never met anybody in 50 years of playing this game that has died of Alzheimer's disease. I mean, I've seen many, many, many bridge players. So it could be proven if somebody wanted to spend the money to prove it. The study could be done for probably twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, and why nobody wants to prove it, I don't know. So it's kind of crazy because it would be a great boon for bridge playing. And it distresses me that the young people in college today really don't play much bridge. They play euchre and hearts and pitch and everything else. In my day, fifty years ago, everybody played bridge. So you know things have changed around. It's a phenomenal game. It's just a just a phenomenal game. We were trying to remember when we when we organized this club at the college in the 60s, that was probably the late 60s, that we found about a bunch of 15 or 20 kids who knew how to play bridge. When we first came to the college, uh, I came in 1963, he came in 60, uh, but we organized a duplicate group of, of bridge players among the students and they seemed to enjoy it. But it was not the thing to do. I mean, it, it was not universal over the campus that people played bridge all the time. But I think it's, it's, a, it's a kind of generational thing. Yeah, it's different now. I don't know why young people, I mean, I get, we don't have hardly anybody your age down in the bridge club. They're all older, yeah. Also, I think uh, young people have more money than we did when we were growing up, and they can afford the video games and that kind of thing. But I think we've tried to get some younger people down there uh, to our club, yeah. but I guess we haven't had much luck. At one time, everybody knew how to play bridge, it seemed like for a period of 20 years, but then he went through a next period of 20 years when nobody knew how to play bridge. So this was the game that we played <laughs> in place of the video games. Um, it didn't cost anything. <laughs>